Hi, my name is Tom Zanussi. I'm a software engineer uh, at Intel. I'm working in a new group called Safety Critical Systems. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about um, an enhancement I have uh, created for the uh, Linux Trace Event subsystem um, that adds inter-event capabilities such as latencies. Um, just a quick overview of uh, what I'll go over today. Um, I'll start with a, a, a a quick overview of trace event itself, um, and then I'll I'll jump right into a um, a real world <coughs> excuse me a real world latency example um, that actually is the motivation for this uh, enhancement, um, and then I'll uh, dive into the a little bit uh, on the design and interface, and conclude uh, with some future plans um, and uh, time for questions. I hope. Um, so, uh, Linux, uh, so Linux has a bunch of places in the kernel where um, developers and um, administrators can sort of gather data about um, what's going on in the kernel under the, uh, behind the scenes under the covers. Um, uh, those things are called trace events and they're normally disabled and they don't um, add any overhead at all to the kernel um, when they're disabled. Um, um, but you can enable them. Um, when you do that, they, the data goes to um, a trace buffer, um, and still the, the overhead, um, even in that case, should be uh, pretty minimal. Um, so there, there are hundreds of these things scattered throughout the kernel, um, and they're grouped, you know, to, keep, to make things manageable, they're grouped into subsystems. Um, uh, this is a... Uh, a, a small uh, subset of them, if you go and look in, in DebugFS, TraceFS, uh, tracing events, uh, subdirectory, you'll see um, the whole set. Um, but each one of those, each one of those sub, subsystems is actually a subdirectory in itself, um, and it, it can, in turn can, uh, contains a whole bunch of other uh, subdirectories that correspond to um, the trace events themselves. Um, and within, um, within each of those trace event subdirectories, um, there are a set of files um, used to um, uh, describe and control uh, individual trace events. Um, uh, here's an example. Um, uh, well, for, for this talk, the, main, uh, the most important file is the format file, which basically describes um, the event data that gets logged whenever you enable an event. Um, uh, this is an example. This is uh, the kmalloc uh, event, uh, the kmalloc event, and it's within, within the kmm subsystem. And I've highlighted the individual fields um, here. Uh, basically, they're just this, this is exactly what will get logged to the um, to the buffer when you enable an event, and and the kernel hits those points. Um, so like I said, they can be enabled. Uh, this is, a, this is what, what it looks like from the, um, the command line. Uh, essentially, it's a command line interface. To enable an event, you send, or you echo one to uh, enable file. Um, in this case, uh, we're actually um, enabling a whole subsystem, the scheduler subsystem, not just one event. Um, and then once you've done that, you uh, 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 look, at, look in the, look in the, the trace, uh, Trace file, which is basically how you look, view the, the, uh, the F trace buffer um, uh, containing the events, and you'll see uh, a number of, see a whole bunch of records um, corresponding to the events that were logged uh, when you enable them. So here we have uh, three events and uh, two different, um, corresponding to two different event types, uh, SCED switch and SCED wake up. And again, I have, um, I've highlighted these in red um, just to show the correspond they directly correspond to the uh, the fields in the in the in the format file. Um, and this is just a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a graphic depiction of that. Um, on the left, we have four events. They're all enabled and logging um, one or more events into the the trace buffer. Um, and this is just a subset of the trace buffer. Um, um, so that's that's the basic that's the basic operation of the the trace event subsystem. You uh, 
um, enable an event, and and you ev eventually, um, and when it triggers, it goes, it, it sends a, a record to the, the trace buffer. Um, but that's not the only thing that can happen um, uh, uh, when an event's triggered. Um, it can actually uh, trigger other things. Um, for instance, like a, a dumping a stack trace. So um, you, uh, it'll actually show you the call trace um, leading up to um, uh, one or whatever event that you're interested in. Um, and uh, uh, you, another action is taking a snapshot. Um, essentially, you, what you can do is enable one, enable, basically you can enable every single event in the, su in the system. Um, and when the event of interest hits, um, it takes a snapshot of the trace buffer. And um, at that point, you can look at the, look at the snapshot and, and basically get um, uh, a really detailed idea about um, what led up to that event. Um, uh, for the purposes of this talk, uh, I'm, we're mainly interested in uh, uh, his trigger uh, his trigger action, um, and his trigger histogram stands for for uh, his stands for histogram here, um, and what his trigger uh, um, uh, what a, what a, what his trigger does is basically um, uh, it, when the event goes to the event goes to the uh, the trace buffer, but it it, it also goes to a uh, uh, a user defined hash table. Um, and the user defines the hash table using again the the, the fields in the format uh, the fields in the format file. Um, so essentially, it, it it it's it's a way of consolidating or aggregating all that data um, from the uh, uh, the event file into uh, sort of a table. Um, just to give you a um, an idea um, using an example. Um, suppose you wanted to see um, for every process on the system, how much, how many read, how many byte, how many bytes each process was asking for um, using the read syscall, um, and how many, actually how many read syscalls it was making. Um, you could do that by setting up a, a hist trigger on, um, on a particular event. In this case, uh, we're gonna set one up on the sysenter read, uh, which is basically the entry for the sys, uh, read syscall. And, um, as we'll set, we'll set it up using a key, using the, the process ID as the key, and um, the, the, uh, with the value of the count, and, and setting the value just means you're going to basically um, keep a running count of, of that, that field, that count field in this case. Um, so I'm set that up, let it run for a while, and then at any time um, in the same um, event uh, directory, read the hist file. And you should see output like this. Um, you can see we have a um, we have a line for each process on the system, and on the right here we have the total number of bytes um, that, would, that the read syscall asked for um, while, while we were running um, this histogram. And in the middle, um, a hit count basically it just means how many times uh, how many times this event was hit, and um, so uh, that tells us. Uh, uh, how many how many, uh, how many uh, read syscalls produce this this amount of this number of bytes? Okay, so graphically um, looks like this kind of. Uh, we have our our uh, our single event enabled, and it's logging a whole bunch of uh, events into the, the trace buffer um, while at the same time, or maybe it's not even doing this. Maybe it's just going directly here, but. Um, it's, it's creating a histogram using um, the fields it was set up with, in this case, process ID, and keeping a running um, total of the, of the number of bytes read. Uh, so basically, what's, it's just condensing this whole huge uh, file into a, a more manageable table. Um, okay, so that's, uh, that, that's, that, that shows you what you can do with a histogram on a single event. Um, but there's one thing, one thing you can't do with a single event uh, is that you can't get it, uh, you can't do latencies with just a single event. You need two events for that. Um, and typically, you also need um, this kind of code associated with, uh, with each event in order to calculate 
uh, the latency. Um, so just to take, uh, so we have our two events here, uh, SCED wake up and SCED switch, and the pseudocode is, is all it's doing is okay, taking the, the current time right now, timestamp right now, and saving it into uh, an associative array or a hash table. Um, in this case, the hash table's name is timestamp, and it's keyed on process ID, uh, wake up PID. Um, and then at a later time, this sched switch event comes in, and um, the, it looks for uh, timestamp in, in, it looks for uh, the corresponding timestamp in the hash table. Um, if it finds it, and only if it finds it, will it do this calculation here, which is basically uh, calculate the latency, take the, um, uh, take the current timestamp and subtract the, the one it found, and you have a latency, and typically it would want to also save that for later. Again, it would uh, probably use a hash table, um, in this case, this wake up latency hash table, um, and then null out the timestamp so um, it doesn't get reused. Um, and I, I chose these, these, these particular events um, on purpose, SCAD wake up and SCAD switch, because they um, directly correspond to um, a real world latency that I actually want to be able to use um, trace events directly for, which is um, in the RT patch set, uh, there's a, um, something called latency hiss, which creates a histogram of, of different various latencies, and the one um, that I'm talking about here, and, and one of the main latencies in, in, in that patch set is, it's called wake up, la wake up latency. Um, and um, as associated with the Archie patch set is, is a uh, test program that essentially, that's used to produce and test this, this particular latency, uh, among others, um, and it's called cyclic test. And um, what I have depicted here is just, uh, just it's, it, 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 create, it normally creates a, a whole bunch of threads doing the same thing. Um, and what I'm depicting here is just one of those threads. Um, so what it, what it normally, what it does is uh, it, it makes a nano sleep system call, um, asking the kernel to put it to sleep and um, uh, to please wake it up um, some number of microseconds later. Um, and so that's what this, uh, the entry to that system call is this event here. Um, and then it sleeps for a little while, and, um, oops, and then the timer wakes it up. Uh, the timer wakes up and tries to wake it up, um, and that, that, that wake up corresponds to this, this uh, sched wake up event. Um, and then um, it doesn't immediately start executing again because it's been put to sleep, and, and it needs to get the CPU back again in order to actually start executing. Um, and that's the, 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 basically the scheduler needs to schedule it back in. And um, that event is um, um, denoted by, you know, it's, it's basically the sched switch event. So the particular latency that we're interested in measuring is uh, this latency between those two events, uh, wake up latency between uh, the time it was awakened and the time it actually um, was put back on the CPU. Um, so just to finish off the, just to finish off the example, um, so it, now it's back on the CPU, but it's not really doing any useful work um, because it still needs to exit the system call. Um, then it can get back over here and do its useful work. Um, but that's uh, this event, the, the exit of the now sleep system call, and the latency between. Um, SCED switch and, and switch and uh, the nano sleep exit is called switch time latency. Um, and um, and uh, RT pass that also does, uh, also does combination latencies, which are um, combinations of uh, one or more latencies. And there's another wake, uh, latency that's a combination of these two called wake up switch latency. I mean, we should be able to do that as well um, with, with the, the enhancement we're talking about. Um, so that's, that's what we want to do. We want to be able to, um, to actually calculate that latency, do a histogram on it um, using only the trace event subsystem. Um, but the problem with that is that the trace event subsystem doesn't do latencies. It's uh, up to now, it's, it's, uh, you can only do strictly intra-event intra um, kind of histograms and so on, um, while latencies are inherently intra-event. Intra 
Um, so there, there are some external tools that can um, generically uh, calculate and do latencies um, using the trace event subsystem, but they require extra languages and runtimes. And um, for an embedded system, that's not feasible uh, for a lot of embedded systems. Um, but my claim and what I've actually implemented is um, that we shouldn't have to be able to write code to do latencies using just uh, the trace event subsystem. Um, and basically what it boils down to is um, sort of encapsulating that pseudocode that I showed you before um, and making it parameterizable by uh, the user. Um, and like I said, that's what I, that's what I did. I, I wrote a patch set to do this and I posted it, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple weeks ago to LKML and um, to the uh, Archie, users, um, Archie users list. And um, it got some good reviews and I'm working on, a, on another version, um, should be out soon, but um, uh, basically to, to, to create that patch, I broke it down into uh, three different sub problems, um, variables, synthetic events, and actions, and I'll go, I'll go over those in um, more detail in the following slides, um, but uh, just quickly now what each one of these is about, um, variables, um, so you have, with latency, you have a, 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 a quantity here in, in, a, in one event and then a quantity here at a later time, and you need to keep track of those somehow. It's, that basically means um, you need some sort of variable uh, support for variables, and uh, for the patch that I just basically did the minimum I had to to solve the problem. Um, um, synthetic events. Uh, so the, the, the trace event subsystem is really geared towards single events, um, it's very single event centric. And when you have something like a, a latency that's derived from multiple events, um, there's really no natural place to, to put a latency in that scheme. Um, so what I did to address that is to create a synthetic event that basically, that tries, that does try to, to fit into the scheme and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, and then um, actions, so, so the variables in the synthetic events basically are the data, data structure side of things. Um, actions actually are the thing that, 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 that physically inject those uh, quantities into the event subsystem um, so that they can be um, used, logged into the uh, buffer and uh, participate in histograms and so on. Um, so taken together, um, that's what I implemented and, and I guess the way I look at it is these are sort of, it's sort of a glue layer for um, just connecting events together using what, what you think of as logical wires, um, no, no coding involved. Uh, so that's, that's the goal anyway. Um, so just going into the, a little deeper into those three uh, sub problems, so the variables, uh, variables um, it's, uh, latency is a really pretty simple thing. It's um, I save a start value at event one and retrieve the, the start value at event two and subtract it from the end value at, at event two. Um, so uh, when a lot of, uh, one of the ways that, that is commonly done is using a hash table. Um, and in the case, in the, in the context of the trace event subsystem, um, we have ready-made hash tables in the form of hist triggers. So we should make use of those. Um, and this is, uh, this, is, this is basically a diagram of, um, um, of uh, the mechanism used to, to actually calculate a latency using uh, the hist triggers. Um, so um, here we have, our, we have our two events. There's sked wake up, sked switch, um, and then associated with each one of those, each one of those um, events is uh, a hash table. This is the, 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 the hist, basically the hist triggers, uh, some hist, a hist trigger has been put on, these, both, on either, both of these. And um, so, uh, so what, sked wake up, so the first event comes in, sked wake up comes in, and, um, it, and it finds its slot in the, in, in the hash table, in the hist trigger hash table, um, which is there. Um, and then it just takes the timestamp um, and saves it into a variable associated with that entry, TS0. Um, similarly, uh, later on, sked switch comes along, it does the same thing uh, with the TS1 variable. Um, and at that point, it has the data it needs to create the latency, or to calculate the latency. Um, so what, what it does, it would, so um, what it does is actually go and look up the uh, value from the first event, um, 
finds the TS0 uh, variable, grabs it, and then does this calculation, and then saves it into yet another variable on, um, uh, on SCED switch and, uh, for use later. Um, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the, the whole mechanism for, for calculating the latency itself. Um, and this is what it looks like from the or command line interface uh, perspective. It's um, so you, you can create a variable user define. You can you can define your name for the variable and then just um, assign a field or uh, yeah, assign a field to it of of uh, a, a value or key field. Um, so. Um, so taking our, our first uh, event, sched, sched wake up, um, here's just, uh, we just do the assignment of the, the current timestamp to this variable TS0. Um, and then later on in the sched switch event, um, we actually uh, just grab the, grab the, um, uh, the make, grab the variable and using this notation dollar sign as a, for the, uh, to no, denote that it's a variable reference and do the calculation. And then again, we, we save it into yet another variable here, wake up lat. And, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I, for, for illustration purposes, I just, uh, I just also did the same thing for a key, just to so you, show you could, you could also save a key in, in, um, in a, uh, a key in a variable. And woken pit is this variable right here. Um, so just one, one note. Um, common timestamp is uh, if you go into the current event subsystem, trace event subsystem, and you look in the format files, you won't see a common timestamp anywhere. Um, that's that, that's a, uh, a part of the, the patch that I submitted. Basically, um, it's just uh, the underlying ring buffer timestamp exposed, exported, or exposed as a, uh, um, as a field for every, available to every event called common timestamp. Okay, so that's variables, uh, synthetic events. Um, like I, like I, as I mentioned uh, before, the you know the the trace event subsystem is very, sing, very uh, event centric. So, you know, you you enable event by writing to a a, a, a file in the in in the, in the individual um, event subdirectory um, called enable. You you set up a trigger. Uh, you set up a histogram by by. Uh, Sending the histogram specification to um, a per event file called trigger, um, and um, and you read the output using um, a file on the event also called hist. Um, so if you have if you have a very uh, if you have a quantity quantity like a latency um, that you want to be able to you know to to display in a histogram, um, it doesn't really make sense to have to do that on either of the um, either of the contributing events, um, what makes more sense, um, and what I implemented was uh, something called synthetic events. It's, they're all they're completely user defined. So the user defines a synthetic event, um, and it, essentially it's a container for um, quantities from um, from other events. Um, but it has it, it exposes the, uh, those in the normal event interface. Um, so the user creates a synthetic event, and then um, once it's created, it ends up in a uh, the, you know, user-defined name, but it ends up in this special uh, subsystem called synthetic. And you go in there and you can see all the, the same um, event files, uh, histogram, trigger, enable, et cetera. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually a full-fledged event, just like any other event. It just happens to be derived from other events. Pardon? Right, yeah. Right, if you enable it, it appears in the trace buffer. Um, so this, this is what it looks like uh, a little more graphically. Um, we have our actual, our two real events, SCED, SCED wake up and SCED switch. Um, and we have our third synthetic event here um, called wake up latency that the user created. And you can see that it references, um, it references variable, variables in the real events. So wake up lat is wake up lat here. Woken PID is Woken PID here. So because it is a full-fledged event, um, you, you can actually just create a histogram on it just like you would the other events. Um, so there's your, you create a histogram and you have a histogram with that latency. 
the derived quantity of, uh, that, that you created the a synthetic event for. Um, and this is just here basically to show that um, this, this derived histogram, this histogram is really is derived from um, these other two event histograms. Um, in this case, this is the difference between um, them that created the latencies. Um, and so this is what it looks like from the, inter the interface uh, perspective. Um, to, so to create a synthetic event, you just, uh, you just echo the name of the, your, you give it a name and echo it, the name along with the um, uh, uh, fields and their types to the synthetic events file, a special synthetic events file um, that I created for this purpose. And um, if it's successful, you read that synthetic events file again and you'll see, you should see your event um, along with any other events that um, were added before. And, um, and, j and just to, uh, to point out again that because it, just, it is a full-fledged real event, you can just create a histogram for it just like uh, you would for any other event or enable it and see it in the trace buffer just like you would for any other event. Okay, so, so at, at this point we have, we have the variables and we have a, a container, um, a synthetic event that, um, that we've created. We see it in the, in the debug FS file system. We even create a, um, a histogram on it, enable it, whatever. Um, uh, but even doing that, all that, you will never see um, an event, uh, actually see an event uh, in either of those places. Um, because up to this point, nobody's told, nobody's told anybody to, to actually um, send an event. So, um, so we need to give the user a way to say, uh, send this, or send this, uh, basically generate this uh, synthetic event we just created. Um, and the way I came up with to do that is just uh, something called an action. Um, and it, it looks like um, it's just a, a, a a phrase like this, um, and I'll, it's basically on the, the unmatch, um, and then the unmatch, and then the matching event, and um, the name of the synthetic event, and then the parameters that you want to use at that point to send uh, that synthetic event. It looks like a function call, but it's it's just uh, really just saying trace this event. Um, so um, just in context here, here's our sketch switch event. Here's the wake-up latency that we just calculated um, from before, and then we just added this phrase here, and that at, that, at this point we're live, and all the great things that you see with the, the, the trace buffer and the, 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 the uh, histogram triggers are, are working, so. Um, so that, that's, it, it, the, the idea of an action is a more generic thing. Um, so I wanted to be able to do other things besides, well, besides um, just trace a synthetic, synthetic event. Um, and one of the other things is that, um, and this is, this is, uh, uh, this is specifically um, something that came from the, late, the RT patch that latency, latency hist uh, stuff, is that uh, what, one of the things it does is that when it, when it sees a latency spike, it, will save the previous PID and the, the next PID, et cetera, so, so that you can go back and look and see that maybe um, give you some idea what, what might have caught, uh, um, something might have, uh, with uh, the previous PID might have uh, lent uh, some, something to the latency, who knows. Uh, but that's, that, that, that this on max uh, latency, which, which you can feed any um, variable to, is basically uh, implements that. Um, yeah. So in, you in, basically, you could do a snapshot on each max. Right. And in, in fact, in, in my my last one of my last slides, I actually mentioned that's one of the things I want to do: okay. a snapshot and uh, yeah. stack trace. Um, so I'm not going to go over this slide, and it's really dense, but um, it's basically just. Uh, Covering the same the steps we just covered, it's basically just uh, concatenating those, um, and I just wanted to to keep it all on one side, just so I could say I was able to implement the um, 
the uh, real-time patch sets wake up latency histogram on one slide. So. <laughs> So yeah, just to recap, it's just what you do. What, what, what's go, what goes on is you know basically the uh, you create the synthetic event. You, the first event you save the timestamp. Second event you create the latency using that old timestamp and the new one, and then you generate your synthetic event, and that's all there is to it. Um, and of course, um, create a histogram using it to see actually see the output. And um, this is actual output from a cyclic test run. Um, and you can see there's there's a block uh, for each each thread in the uh, in I think I did two threads um, and uh, there's a block for each thread. Um, we'll just look at the 2521 thread here, um, and we can see uh, we have latencies from one to 26 microseconds, um, and we can see over here on this side how many exactly. Uh, exactly how many of each latency we had. So we can see sort of a, a peak right here um, on two and three. So. Pardon? No, I. Yeah, that's idle. Yeah, so this, uh, that's pretty much it as far as the, the, uh, the enhancement goes. Um, I hope I've been able to convey that I think it's a, a useful, sort of a natural addition. It's something that I think, um, you know, is probably one of the only remaining things uh, that, uh, that, that I would really want to do with his triggers. But, um, uh, and uh, so I think, you know, basically, I think with this, with 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 this addition, you should be able to you know basically build any uh, straightforward latency application. Uh, obviously, latency hist is what the, the the original reason and the target for it. But um, uh, we should also you, you should also be able to do any sort of latency application that doesn't require any extra code, any extra logic um, to do, basically. Um, and the other point is that. Um, that you can do, you know, we just happen to be looking at the common timestamp because this is, gen, uh, you, can, you can use any field in the format files, um, any, any field in the trace event subsystem, you could, you could create a histogram using um, any of those fields, not just, uh, common, not just the timestamp if you can frame your problem in that way. Um, as far as future plans, um, I don't really have any, any more, I, I really don't think I'll do anything more with his triggers. Um, I think you know, this, this kind of re almost reaches the breaking point of what you can do with a, a single line, command line interface. Um, I really wouldn't want to add any more to it uh, along those lines. Um, like I did mention before, or Steve mentioned before, is that um, uh, I, would, I, would, I think it would be really uh, useful to be able to uh, create an on max snapshot uh, trigger. Basically, um, you know, whenever you hit the latency spike, you, you, you know, you could be, you could have the whole, the whole, uh, basically the whole trace event subsystem enabled at that point, and you hit the late latency spike, uh, create a snapshot, um, and then that gives you a, a lot, a super amount of detail about what led up to the latency, um, irregardless of, of how much overhead the tracing itself might cause, but um, I think that would be a really useful thing. I mean, you know, it's basically a super superset of of the on max that I showed you earlier, which just basically saves the uh, uh, save the uh, the previous and, and, and next PID. Um, similarly, the, the the stack trace on max stack trace, it's always useful to be able to see the call chain that led to something. So, see the call chain that led to the uh, uh, that led to the, the latency spike uh, might be useful. Um, and then beyond that, uh, just applications on top of this, may, you know, uh, again, um, finish implementing the rest of the latency, his patch set, um, using it, um, and, um, and then also integration with trace command. Um, when I, uh, during the uh, uh, review for the, the initial RFC patch set, I mentioned that you know, it's pretty—it's pretty indispensable to have some way of um, 
listing all the triggers and all the variables um, and, and kind of impossible to deal with it otherwise. And so I was going to add an enhancement to, to basically do that, some kind of a, a dedicated pseudo file system or something. And Steve mentioned that um, uh, trace command already does this. So uh, in later versions, it already does this. So um, that means I don't have to implement it. So if I integrate with trace command, uh, then my work is already done. So. Um, that's all I had. Uh, thanks for coming to the talk. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Uh, actually, a statement. Um, one thing, uh, because it's very cryptic, I was thinking you think be like Kernel Shark, that was the way that you just said it's here. Point and, peck, uh, point and click. Yeah, I want to trace this with this path. It'll give you an option of what. Right. Right. Um, same thing with block layer or network. Those like set things. And another feature I was thinking of doing, uh, brainstorming here, is uh, gutting the preempt or the uh, preempt disable. The, we have the preempt, right now there's a couple latency tracers within the kernel. Um, skips to the, well, at least we have, yeah, we have, we have wake up latency tracer already. I might gut that and re implement it on top. They still keep the trick thing, but actually you have to use your infrastructure. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, as far as the inner. That's yeah, that that's actually supported. I I actually did that and I ran into a problem with recursive um, events, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure that one out, but yeah, that's, that's the way it should really work. Right. Yeah, that's a great idea. That would, yeah, basically some arithmetic between the Mac, on Max. Um, Well, now it's about twice as long after your comments. So.
yeah, that that's good. Yeah, that makes sense. That would be more uh, consistent with the shell and things like that too. So, Karen. Right. I mean, you get a good example. It's okay. It's waking up and then you get a schedule, but you know sometimes the causality is not that clear. Um, right. Yeah. Because you could combine like the wake up latency with a read system call, and it wouldn't be meaningless. But. Yeah, that's right. Right, and then yeah, then you start getting into, you know, how how complex do you want to how how, because then now you're kind of going into the uh, area of the other tools I was talking about, which actually let you. Yeah. Well, Yeah, I mean, having something say this happened, this event has this value, or this value is greater than this value, set this value, or increment it, or whatever. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty reasonable. And it shouldn't be too hard to do it, it should be that good. Right. So that, yeah, but then once you have that, then you're going to add something on top of that, and. It's <laughs> quality. Whatever. Yeah, well. Right. And if you, if you look at an SKD, what you want to see is uh, where is the SKD tuned into something that we are getting data? You know, because that tells you a lot how long it's processing going or the delay between the Right. That's what that's what the end user will be looking for. Right. Right. If we have a generic way to express these inter-event latencies or whatever you you try to deduce from here, then this is helpful not only for the purposes we want to have to support you. Then that's the I think that's one of the things why I always block on the on on the latencies to browse the Right. Uh, fixated on that particular problem space. And one of the general rules of Archie is that we want to solve things in a, in a more generic way in order to, 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 to help other people solve their problems as well. Right. And so maybe have a look at that. Yeah. 
Right. Right. Yeah, I think now we're, I'm, I'm starting to hear a common theme, you know, and I was actually talking to Steve about this yesterday, is that, you know, being able to, what I do now is um, I have a, a shell script that basically implements a function like what you're talking about or um, these other higher level latencies and, and so on. Um, um, it would be really, yeah, so it, what, I think what, what's needed is a higher level grouping um, so you can basically deal with, a, a, you know, a, a latency, a higher level latency as a single unit and instead of um, putting it together piece by piece each time. Right. And that, that's the whole thing, the whole interesting thing we want to have. Can, can you actually use that on trace marker events like the for space one? Um. The reason I ask is the manual is actually learning the implementation that it comes from the first space and the second of that place. And it might be interesting if you would use that, but then I guess we wouldn't differentiate between the two trace marker events, would it? Mm. Any other questions? Well, okay, well then, I think that's it. Um, thanks for coming. <laughs>